and a lot of people don't even realize that how a glove is measured either, you know, or yeah. what that sizing means. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we try to put as much information we can out there on the sites to make sure people realize, you know, what is a nine inch glove? What is a 10 inch glove? The different web types, things like that. But I think it'd just be really good if we could provide something, you know, that would fill this space and, you know, help kids out, have a nice kind of more pro style glove that their parents, you know, uh, don't have to, you know, work three jobs to afford yeah. <laughs> just to get them a glove, you know, it's yeah. going to last them more than, um, uh, half of the season, like yeah. want something that they can invest in. Um, it's going to, you know, help them be successful out on the field, but, um, also something they can be proud of. And then just the right size hand stall. You know, I think that's one of the most important things is fitting the hand yeah. of, of the you know player that's going to be using. It's got a really nice small wrist opening. The finger stalls fit really nice yeah. for the age group that it's designed for. <laughs> With Just Gloves being a baseball and softball sporting goods company, our employees are afforded unique opportunities to make an impact within those markets. And you never know who it is within our company that could be the individual with the next big idea that is a hit on our website. So today's interview, I think, is going to make that point extremely clear as we welcome in a member of our IT and development team whose idea for a youth glove eventually became a Rawlings youth glove and is now one of the most popular youth baseball gloves on our site. Caleb Gilliland, welcome to the Beyond the Glove podcast. Yep, yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, so I think I've, I've explained this before on the podcast, but just in case I haven't, everyone that's listening is going to want to know that Just Gloves is under the parent company Pro Athlete Incorporated, and we run what we call three Just Brands. And so we obviously have Just Gloves. We have our Just Bat site as well, which I'm sure most of you guys are aware of. And we also have Just Paddles, which is a pickleball paddle website set up in a very similar platform. And within our company of Pro Athlete, we actually house our own IT and development team, which Caleb is a part of that squad. So Caleb, what, what's your title and what do you do specifically for, for Just Gloves and for all the brands? Yeah, um, so my official title is uh, Director of Innovation and Technology. Okay. Um, so... Being a smaller company, we obviously wear a lot of different hats and mm -hmm. know that as well. Um, so I work with pretty much every department uh, in the company in, in some capacity, but we're very fortunate to have a really talented group of web developers mm -hmm. um, that build our own sites. So all of our sites are made in-house. All the you know new features that we've brought to the site over the years, you know, the pick your pack, the bat and glove coaches. Mm -hmm. All those things are built in-house from the ground up um, by our team. And so I help oversee that process, um, do a lot of project management in that regard. Um, I also work with our IT operations team, mm -hmm. which provides all the uh, infrastructure for our websites and all of our uh, equipment to run on. And then we also support, you know, all of our in-house customers, if you will, you know, uh -huh. all of our employees and make sure they have what they need to be able to, you know, do their jobs well and, you know, creating new spaces like this and yeah. all the different things we have in our building. Um, do that work with the warehousing team a lot um, with making sure, you know, projects we need to do as far as getting orders shipped out, um, finance. So just a little bit of everybody, um, uh -huh. customer service team as well and, and taking feedback from customers and uh, sometimes incorporating that as well into our, into our website and technology. Nice. And so I think you may have mentioned this, but, so your favorite aspect of the job, is it just that you're able to get hand, a little bit of hands on every little different part of the company? Yeah, I love it. No two days are ever the same. <laughs> yes. um, always a challenge. You know, mm -hmm. um, uh, I've always appreciated that, you know, um, seeing something new every day. I can't just do the same thing over and over. And then obviously being able to be involved in baseball. Yeah. Uh, every day when you come to work is is pretty awesome. I've been yeah. a baseball fan and Absolutely. played baseball my whole life. So, um, yeah, getting to see the whole spectrum of e-commerce from, you know, how a customer finds us uh -huh. uh, all the way through making sure they have a great experience. Um, they check out us smoothly. They get their product on time and then make sure they come back to us again. I'm, I was pretty fascinated by that yeah. um, whole process. So It is cool to have that opportunity. You're in. IT and development, I'm more on the marketing side. And it is so cool to be able to have the opportunity to grow those skills, but then also have it all tied around baseball. It really yeah. makes it a pretty special experience. Can't so. beat. I feel very fortunate to be able to combine two of my passions, you know, technology and my mm -hmm. love for baseball together in the in the job I get to do every day. So it's pretty cool. So um, so you love getting your hands on everything that we have on our site. And on top of that, 
You're also a husband and a father of both a daughter and a son, correct? Yeah. And we were just talking about their ages. You, you got your daughter, Paisley. How old is she? Yep. So Paisley's 11 okay. and then my son is nine. Um, both, you know, very active in, in sports and, you know, keeping us busy. So, okay. And so it was through coaching your son that you had this idea for a youth baseball glove. So you were coaching, you were coaching Graham and what was kind of the observation that you had made about uh, how gloves were being made for youth kids? Yeah, so I've been coaching youth baseball for a long time. Um, when I got done playing, um, I, I've kind of you know found that void in my life of uh, you know yeah, baseball yeah. not being there and yeah. you know being being too old to play anymore. And so I had some opportunities to coach at the youth level before I even had kids, mm -hmm. um, and that you know kind of cut my teeth in coaching in that regard. And then uh, I've kind of been doing it ever since. Mm -hmm. And you know, once I started working at, at pro athlete, I really got more involved, like in the equipment side, you know, and like always been kind of a gear nerd when it came to baseball and stuff, but uh -huh. getting to live in it every day and see the inner workings, uh, really kind of opened my eyes and made me look at things in a different way that I had before. Mm -hmm. So, you know, started coaching, uh, Graham T-ball, you know, when he first started and then once started moving up into, um, you know, like, uh, coach pitch and then machine pitch uh -huh. we kind of had a group of kids that we were taking through there and you know every year you know you get a new group of kids that would come in and kind of just started seeing this this same pattern and then when i was shopping for for graham for his first glove mm -hmm. um you know playing t-ball and then actually moving up into coach pitch i was kind of looking for a little bit you know, a better glove for him and yeah. you know we play a lot of catch in the yard every yeah. day and you know he was getting to the point where you know he could play pretty good catch and uh -huh. so I just started looking and I, I kind of just saw this kind of, you know, big void that was there um, when I was shopping for baseball gloves in the youth side. And then it was like a kind of a, a, a missing piece right there in the middle. Uh -huh. And then we jumped straight up to kind of the, you know, teen and adult and there's all kinds of options there. Yeah. And so I just kind of thought like there needs to be something here because what we would see every year, new kids would come in and see one of two things, right? So they would have like a really small, like nine inch uh -huh. t-ball glove, you know, that they'd been, yep. they'd been using that was like synthetic material, you know, <laughs> right, and, off, right off the Walmart. Shelf. Yeah. Right <laughs> off the shelf. Um, you know, kind of that plasticky feel like mm -hmm. really hard to, cl to close and form a pocket into like, it's, it, and wouldn't last more than maybe, you know, half a season. And yeah. most of the time it gets left out in the yard That's or something right. too. So the other, I was just going to step in the other place. I feel like sometimes you would see back in the day, like the Royals would have like glove day. Yeah. And I feel like when I was a kid, you yeah. sometimes see that, that glove day, plastic glove. Exactly. There, yeah. So. And, yeah. So, you know, see a lot of that. And then, um, on the other end of the spectrum, we'd see like just glove way too big, you know, mm -hmm. it's either, you know, maybe older brother's glove. That's a, you know, 11 and a half, 12 inch baseball glove, mm -hmm. maybe his dad's old glove, you know? So, you know, just seeing two totally opposite things, but, we'd see that all the time. And then, you know, parents would come to me and they would, they would say, you know, Hey, do you feel like that? You know, he needs a new glove or what size, you know, what kind of glove should he be using? Uh -huh. And it was kind of sometimes hard to make a recommendation because yeah. you had, you know, like I said, the sizing was pretty limited uh, in the space and you kind of had two ends of the spectrum. You had kind of like the 40 to $50 range where, you know, it was a, a smaller size could get up to like that 10, 10 and a half inch range sometimes, but not very often. But quality wise, you weren't going to just get that like, you know, real nice leather, um, a good solid shell. That was one thing I really noticed was the body of the glove and the shells would never keep their form. You know, yeah. so after maybe half a season or, you know, playing catch a lot with, you know, my son, his glove was, you know, so flimsy, you know, there yeah. just wasn't much left that it was really starting to break down and, and you know, kind of, um, the outer coating of was kind of like, you know, cracking. And so, uh, there was that, or then there's like, you move up to like the 300, $350 yeah. <laughs> super high end, you know, youth glove. And uh -huh. I never felt comfortable recommending that, you know, yeah. to a parent that was, you know, playing on, on one of our teams. We just weren't at that point yeah. in time. Yeah. There's a place for that, but it, it just wasn't for, you know, the teams and the kids that we were coaching. So I was like, I feel like, you know, in the league we're playing in and, you know, it's a pretty big league in the Kansas city area. A lot of kids, you know, mm -hmm. in that like five to 10 to 11 year old range, a lot yep. of kids playing. That's the biggest age group for sure. Mm -hmm. I just felt that, you know, I think there's room for something that is in the mid tier price range. Right. So it's like 
it's not cheap, but it's not necessarily going to break the bank either. Yeah. But you're going to get more than one season out of it. And yep. it's going to be a glove that's going to last your kid two, three, maybe four years, depending on how they grow, where they're at, what size they're at, um, what positions they're playing. Mm-hmm. And that would be more like a, a real nice model of a baseball glove, you know. Um, I just thought I think parents would be willing to invest in that for their kid. Mm-hmm. They have no problem, you know, buying a bat that's expensive. <laughs> Yeah. You're growing out of those every year. Uh-huh. The gloves often get overlooked, right? And so I see the kids, they got a really nice bat coming in, but the glove gets overlooked. <laughs> and so I'm like, man, that's one of the most important parts of the game. You know, you're using that, you know, every time you're on the field. Um, so that's where we kind of stepped in. I, you know, I kind of had this idea in my head of, you know, let's see if there's uh, somebody that will work with us and design us something that would, you know, uh, fit that kind of need that we see uh, for Mm -hmm. those age groups and give them a really nice glove that they can grow with and and play ball with. Yeah. I've mentioned before, I always think that people kind of buy their baseball gear backwards Yeah, where they want to spend a ton of money on the bat, but then like short change the glove side. Yeah. But I do think that it's worth thinking about at least it's like, maybe you should spend a little more on your glove, especially as you get older, because those bats only last sometimes not even a full season. And your glove, you're most likely going to be with at 100%. least two, three, four seasons. You know, and I, I actually, I wanted this too to, you know, I, I still have all of my old gloves oh, yeah, when yeah. I was a kid. Uh-huh. I, I kept them all. And so, like, I wanted this to also be like something that you know, if you take care of it, there's no yep. reason this glove, you know, it couldn't last you, you know. And it's like maybe someday this is something, you know, a dad could pass down to their kid, you yeah. know. And it's like, uh, it's definitely built to last as long as you take care of it. And I thought that was another thing too. Like, you know, you could save this and maybe down the road, you know, down the road, pass it down. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And then, so similar to you, like you're, you're coaching more than I am, but I don't work with parents or coaches on like a daily level with, in regard to like purchasing their gloves, but from every once in a while, I have a cousin reach out to me or a friend that's like, I'm buying a glove for my kid and everyone is dying to get out of the 10 inch and 10 and a half inch gloves and get like an 11, 11 and a half inch, 12 inch gloves. Why is that? Like, what do you think? Is it just a rite of passage or what? <laughs> yeah, I think that it's kind of a misunderstanding mm-hmm. uh, on on parents' parts because uh, gloves are a little different than bats, right? So yeah. like bats, like you have this like incremental yeah. increase, you know, and it, it's kind of this like smooth transition of the drops and everything. And yeah. it follows a pattern and everything. Gloves are just so much different because yeah. it's like, okay, when you're a kid, yeah, you're going to go up in size, you know, like nine. And a lot of people don't even realize that how a glove is measured either, you know, or yeah. what that sizing means. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we try to put as much information we can out there on the sites to make sure people realize, you know, what is a nine inch glove? What is a 10 inch glove? The different web types, things like that. But then obviously, you know, once you get to a certain point, it's like, well, when I get older, I should just be using the biggest glove <laughs> yeah. I, can, I can use, yeah. right? Uh-huh. You know, based on like a bat, you want, I, to, you want to swing the biggest bat you can comfortably, yeah. you know, like control and, and swing. And it's like, uh-huh. Once you get to a certain point, it's like, no, now it's going to depend on what position you play. Yeah. Right. And it's like, yeah, for an outfielder, you're going to look to this big glove. You could technically as an outfielder continue to just incrementally. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so, so gloves don't quite follow that pattern. So I think it's like a yeah. little bit, you know, difficult for people to kind of understand that. And I think they feel like the bigger the glove, the better my kid is going to catch. Yeah. And that's just not, it's just not the case. Um, you know, the glove has to, to fit the, the, the kid and the player Mm -hmm. And, you know, in my opinion, you know, like I said, coaching a lot of youth kids and watching them develop and things like that, the longer a a kid can comfortably stay in a smaller glove as far as their hand fitting and everything, Uh I feel like the better they are as far as a a fielder uh, playing catch. Like, you know, when that glove is light and it's comfortable on their hand, it's broken Uh in well, and it really makes them, you know, know where that pocket is and, you know, feel that ground ball, you know, really uh, fundamentally with their hands. Mm-hmm. I try to keep kids in as a small of a glove as possible for the longest period of time mm-hmm. to where it's still comfortably fitting their hands. And then, you know, once, you know, their body starts telling me they're ready for a little bit bigger glove, that's when I move them up. But I think there's kind of a, a false notion that a bigger glove is going to make my kid catch better. Yeah. And that's just, you know, from my experience coaching, it's just not true. Yeah. That's really interesting. I had not thought of that before where with bats, it is an incremental change, but if you're a shortstop and once your kid gets to like 10 years old, yeah. he might get an 11 and a half inch glove and then never get that bigger. Be the than, biggest glove he ever That wears. could be yeah. confusing because, you know, shoes typically always grow until you're in high school at least yeah. and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So that's uh, that's really neat. I never thought of that before. Yep. Um, 
Okay, so you've made this observation about kind of an inefficiency in youth gloves. So you have, you've got the glove that features the correct short length, but is made from low quality leather. And then you also have a good quality leather glove, but is either too long of a length or the fitting is too big as well. Too expensive. Um, correct. Yeah. Or Yeah, exactly. And then, but, and, and you notice this, and as you mentioned before, you work for a baseball sporting goods company, yep. but not necessarily within the marketing or product merchandising space. So does the idea die with you? What what did you do with that once you once you made the observation? Yeah. So fortunately for us, you know, being a small company and in my role, getting to work with all the different departments, you know, mm -hmm. I kind of, you know, know who to talk to, know who does what uh, type of thing. And so um, I think I first uh, mentioned this to our senior buyer, Ryan, mm -hmm. um, you know, he's got all the great relationships with our suppliers. Yeah. Um, you know, I knew he would know the right person to talk to, know the right company, you know, to take the idea too. I also mentioned it you know, to our owner, Scott, and kind of told him the idea I had that I was kicking around uh -huh. just to see like, Hey, are we okay with, you know, trying something like this, you yeah. know? And did, yeah. If you think there's something there, then, you know, go ahead. So, you know, I talked to Ryan, I said, yeah, here's what I've been noticing, right? You know, mm -hmm. it's like, I've been, you know, coaching my, my son's getting into this age group. We've got a lot of kids on our, on our teams and there's something missing here, you know, in the glove market. I'm having a hard time finding a glove to recommend um, to my parents that are uh -huh. coming to me for recommendations. Yeah. And I think it'd just be really good if we could provide something, you know, that would fill this space and, you know, help kids out, have a nice kind of more pro style glove that their parents, you know, uh, don't have to, you know, work three jobs to afford <laughs> just to get them a glove, you know, it's yeah. going to last them more than um, uh, half of a season. Like yeah. I want something they can invest in, um, it's going to, you know, help them be successful out on the field, but, um, also something they can be proud of, you know, wearing. Um, so I kind of told him, I said, here's kind of the, the things that I really want to see out of it. You know, there's uh -huh. a couple of things that I really had a vision in my head that I wanted to make sure were there with whoever, you know, built this for us. Um, one had to be the right size, yeah. right? Had to be somebody willing to go in uh, at that 10 and 10 and a half inch. I wasn't going to go any bigger than that, mm -hmm. you know, because once you get 11, the markets, there's all kinds of stuff out there, you know, yeah. and it's like had to be in that 10 and 10 and a half inch space. Um, had to be high quality leather. You mm -hmm. know, that was the other thing, like want this thing to last, want to make sure that it's going to be really high quality leather. Had to have a really good shell too, something that was durable, is going to, you know, form a nice pocket, but also be able to keep its shape at the same time to where you can't just, you know, squeeze yeah. it in half over and over and over <laughs> again it's like a newspaper so yeah. um and then you know the, the other thing was um i wanted to make sure whoever was going to make it for us would make it in lefty model um there you go i'm left-handed yeah uh -huh. i grew up you know before the internet was super <laughs> popular we had the east bay catalogs there you know, go. and it was always so hard finding a left-handed glove yeah um and just kind of took what we could get what we could find and so i wanted to make sure that there we weren't leaving out the you know, lefties the lefties of the world yeah. that have such a hard time finding a glove it's like well, we're going to go through the trouble of making a really nice youth glove uh -huh. want to make sure that it's available to everybody nice um you know so many times you get, you get a really cool glove and it's yeah. right hand only you yeah know, that's, that's made and i just want to make sure that we you know had that out there for everybody yeah. um lefty or righty and it was there and then also too i wanted it to aesthetically you know look like a nice baseball glove yeah you know and so i went with uh um you know the classic black so we're talking at caleb's chomping at the bit go ahead yeah. grab it we got the glove right here for us yeah so, so um wanted please. to make sure that uh, a couple of things so um we got the 10 inch model that, that ben has there and then this is the 10 and a half inch model here so when i was kind of designing this and going through like i said i wanted to, i wanted to do kind of a a classic look that it had a little bit of a modern edge to it mm -hmm. um so that's why i went with kind of the silver um you know piping and welting and the stitching along it but with the classic black leather i think you know a, a classic black baseball glove yeah. will never go out of style that's right can appeal to pretty much every everybody uh -huh. um i've always been a fan of, of black gloves and when they're clean like how, how nice they look and oh, everything yeah. um so that's why we went with the, the black color with kind of the the silver um you know welting and stitching all the way around mm -hmm. um went with the uh basket web for the um, 10 inch model, uh, just cause it's a little easier to break in with the basket web. Um, it's gonna fit all positions. Uh, it's just gonna be just kind of your classic first baseball glove, uh -huh. you know, it's gonna be with your basket web. And then 
one that's kind of the H web for the um, 10 and a half inch model. That way you get up into kid pitch, um, yeah. you know, infielder is going to be able to use this glove. Outfielder is going to be able to use this glove. It's going to be pretty universal yeah. to everybody um, and, and fit that. Um, also did the, uh, you know, the little finger hood on yeah. the index finger. Um, wanted that to be like a, a, you know, kind of a nice pro touch yeah. to go along with that, to give it that look. Um, and then just the right size hand stall. You know, I think that's one of the most important things is fitting the hand yeah. of of the you know player that's going to be using it's got a really nice small wrist opening the finger stalls fit really nice yeah. for the age group that it's designed for um and you know just came out just really nice and i mean you smell it yeah and i mean it smells just like a high end glove and just the feel of it the leather is super soft but i mean it's got some stiffness to it you know yeah. i mean it's it's going to break in pretty easily but it also has some some stiffness and some form to it as well and so it does a good job of balancing softness um and you know that stiffness is going to give you some durability as well um so that was kind of the the route that we took and you know the the idea in my mind with watching my son grow up and how he's played is like you know the 10 inch model is going to be kind of suited for um that five to seven to eight year old age range is kind of the idea behind that um you know that's kind of where um that's going to set for the size of the player and every kid's going to be a little bit different, but that was kind of the idea, idea behind it was 10 inch would be first starting out in T ball, going up maybe coach pitch or machine pitch mm-hmm. five to seven, maybe eight. And then the 10 and a half bench model being in that, like, you know, seven to eight all the way up to maybe 10 or 11 years old. Mm-hmm. And another idea that I had with this when I was thinking about this was even a little bit older of maybe a middle infielder that likes a smaller glove. Yeah. You know, um, maybe, you know, 11, 12, maybe 13, that once that small glove, maybe a second baseman, you know, this would work as well. And yeah. then um, we also thought about another use case, which this was really awesome. I was reading the reviews for it the other day uh-huh. on our, our website, and a person had um, left a review that I think is a 13 or 14 year old was using it as a training glove. Yeah. You there know, you go. and so like exact same thing. If you got a kid that has, you know, maybe smaller hands and they're looking for a good training glove. Um, this is perfect for that. I mean, it's going to give you the feel of a higher end glove, but Mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to have to spend a fortune to, you know, get into it. Um, so that's kind of the idea behind kind of how we wanted to build it and kind of, you know, the first initial steps was designing the profile, the layout, the, uh, pocket type, um, the color of it and everything like that. So we, you know, we went to Rawlings, uh, Ryan said, I think this would be good for them and, um, said, Hey, you know, Here's what we're, here's this idea we have. You know what do you, what do you guys think of and this? Is, yeah, let's do it. You know, mm-hmm. let's uh, let's let's do it. So they built us a couple samples um, and got a hold of those and used them. Took yeah. them on the field. You know, had kids use them and yeah. kind of gave some feedbacks and, and made a few small revisions based on that. And that was how we you know came up with what we what we see here today. Yeah. Um, one thing that I'm really excited about that uh, it's kind of a an insider tip, I guess. Ooh, that, here we go. Um, a change that we're actually making to these after the initial round of feedback went out was on the inside, the lining of these, instead of having kind of the sheep's wool liner, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, that has a tendency when you get sweaty and gets dirty, it really kind of gets matted down. And after a while it kind of, kind of breaks down. Um, and just kind of after using my sons for a long time, his is kind of really, you know, kind of broken down a little bit. So, actually going to be including the foam liner nice that's on the higher end um, yeah. part of the hides and the pro preferreds so i think we're going to be getting those shipments in in august okay um so after that this is actually going to have the thermo formed foam liner they use on the on the other high-end rawlings gloves so nice. really excited about that that's pretty cool yeah i feel like the kind of woolly is like kind of the classic thing it but is. i i personally on the gloves that i use i really like the foam it feels I, so much nicer yeah. like on your wrist and like i said it, it just holds up better and, and it doesn't keep all that dirt and sweat and everything in there and yeah. i just i'm a big fan of those foam liners so nice. that was something on my son's after about a year i noticed and i you know went back to ryan i said hey you think that we can make this change like if we can make this change like i feel like this is like the perfect youth glove yeah. you know for the age group that we're going after, like there's not a whole lot else we can make better about this glove. Uh-huh. And I said, yeah, we'll do it for you. So, nice. um, you know, awesome to have partners that are willing to listen and, and do those things for you. So. Yeah. So two observations that I, I really love about this glove, as you mentioned earlier, this one is definitely 
easier. It's a little easier to break in than that one, which I like. So as he was saying, this is like five to seven years old to get them, get them in. And that one is, uh, it's a little, not, it's a little bit stiffer, but you can tell with the eye web that it does make it a little stiffer. The other thing that I love about this glove that you had kind of touched on that some older kids were using it as a trainer, as a dad, the glove that my six-year-old son used, I can put my hand in it as well, which I think is super helpful that he can put it in, he can squeeze it easily. And I can also do it just for like showing him how to like do little things. Um, I think that's a huge thing for dads as well to be able to, to do that with, with the glove. I would, I would agree. Yeah. That it's, um, you know, the more you can help, help kid down the road. And, you know, I'm always a big believer in having the right equipment for kids for Mm -hmm. their appropriate ages. And, you know, whether that be the right size bat, right size glove, whatever it may be. Um, so, that's why I wanted to kind of, you know, help kids along this journey and, and mm-hmm. you know, get them something that will really help them out on the field. Nice. So the fall of 2022 comes around. And so we launched the Rawlings uh, Gamer Contour gloves on the site. And with this type of launch, there's not usually like a ton of fanfare yeah. like there would yeah. be for a Heart of the Hide or something like that. But did you, did you feel a little bit of pride that first time that you saw the gloves up there on the site? So Yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty cool. Like just <laughs> seeing like an idea that you had in your head that you know is going to help a lot of kids yeah. in their in their journey on the ball field and you know becoming ball players like that's pretty cool yeah. and I'm pretty fortunate and thankful to to be at a place where I had the freedom to be able to have an idea mm-hmm. run with it yeah. and you know not just immediately get shot down on something <laughs> yeah um that that was really awesome and I think it, and another really great feeling that I had was the first time I actually saw somebody else using one on a field. Oh yeah. That's that, cool. That wasn't yeah. like somebody on my team that I'd recommended to it. Cause like we've got like, I'd say like three quarters of my team right now is wearing this nice. glove. That's awesome. Um, just from parents recommendations. And now yeah. I can say like, yeah, I've got a perfect, perfect glove to recommend to you. And yeah. so like, you know, like three quarters of our team are wearing this exact model nice. right here. Um, and yeah, the first time like just playing in a, it was, it was a tournament or a game, I can't remember, but mm-hmm. uh, I saw a player on the other team using using one of these on the field yeah and that was pretty cool you know yeah. seeing that and you know seeing that somebody had went and found it organically uh-huh. um you know, s- you know purchased it you know thought enough of it to think this is going to be a good glove for my kid purchased it and you know um just seeing that come to life that was a really cool experience for me nice that's awesome they and as well as you had mentioned earlier there's a lot of good feedback on the website as well from customers yeah. which i personally find on the site is the most helpful way to shop because a lot of times what customers will do is they'll write the age of the player that they're shopping for. So it'll be, yeah. you can make it more personal to you. They'll be like, I'm shopping for my seven year old. So you're like, Oh, okay. Like yeah. I de- most likely if this works for a seven year old, it'll probably work for my seven year old too. Yeah. Uh, I noticed so. that as well. And I was, and I'm glad to see that it's been well received by others, you know, out, outside of here. Um, mm-hmm. so, you know, we did take a lot of time and, um, you know, really kind of tested it out to make sure it was going to be what we thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. And I felt like that, you know, we got the product right kind of sell itself. Yeah. I think people are looking for a certain thing and mm-hmm. I think that they were, you know, limited on options. So I thought that, you know, a lot of the, you know, dads and moms out there that are like me, mm-hmm. you know, that are kind of willing to, you know, spend some money but not break the bank on, you know, a, a glove for a, you know, 5 to 8 year old yep. but want to get them something nice. Like this is a perfect compromise on this on that um on that regard and so um I, it it has been well reviewed on the site. Um, I, I regularly just kind of get on and check and see nice. if there's anybody that's, you know, saying anything that could be improved on it or if anybody in the question and answers, maybe there's something that, you know, they're wondering about that we could use as feedback to make it better in the future. Uh-huh. I'm always looking for stuff like that too. But, uh, so far I think people, like I said, have been, um, really happy with it. It seems like their players have been doing really well and being successful with it and they're using it for all the different use cases that we thought about, you yeah. know, so I was really happy to see that. That's pretty cool. Well, Caleb, thanks for joining us. Before we let our uh, guests on the podcast go, we always do three strikes, uh, just three questions uh, at the end uh, of my choosing. So first question, did you make your son Graham use the Gamer Contour right away after it came out? Absolutely. <laughs> he, he actually started using one of the samples. <laughs> nice. um, so his first glove was the 10 uh, inch model. 10 inch model. Yeah, um, right here. Yep. He, we had a sample of the 10 inch and the 10 and a half inch. So okay. I think he was six at the time. Okay. Um, he started using the 10 inch. We started playing catch with it, breaking it in. And it was just a fantastic glove for him. Like uh-huh. really, um, you know, really helped him out. Played a lot of good catch. Um, he used it for, I think, uh, 
two full seasons, he probably played, I would say, probably like 60 games with nice. that glove. Uh-huh. And it, he started, you know, growing. And so just this year, uh, he just turned nine. But mm-hmm. so just this season is when he actually started using the 10 and a half. We moved into kid pitch this year. And so mm-hmm. I turned him loose on the 10 and a half inch. Um, he started using that. And so he has he has used both of them. I did make him use them for testing purposes, <laughs> but it also helped out that um, you know we were getting feedback, and it was it ended up being a great glove, and and he really enjoyed it. And another really exciting thing that I wanted to mention uh, really quick that's another kind of insider thing that's going to uh-huh. be coming down the pipeline. We're actually going to be expanding on this line. Okay. Um, so pretty excited about that. I think it's going to be coming potentially later on this year. Uh, we're going to be coming out uh, with a first basement Ooh, there uh, we go. gamer model. Nice. I think it's going to be an 11 and a quarter or 11 and a half inch model. Um, and then we're also coming out with an outfield model. Okay. Um, nice. So I think it's going to be an 11, uh, just got a little bit bigger uh, pocket on it, a little uh-huh. bit bigger web, but everything about the glove itself is going to stay the same. They're going to have the foam liners, mm-hmm. um, the thermoform foam liners, uh, hand stalls are going to be the same, same colorway and everything like that. I'm uh-huh. um, just expanding the series. To help with those position specific players um, that you know are looking for that first baseman or that outfield glove that's just got a little bit you know bigger pocket, yeah. um, so I'm really excited about that and looking forward to seeing when those those come out and yeah. getting some feedback on those too. Nice, I'm sure you were like, buddy, uh, I helped bring this thing to market, so you, you kind of have to. Use yeah, it, so. I was like, yeah, we're gonna grab one of those and, and pick those up and, and see what those look like. But yeah, I did tell him I was like, you don't really have a choice in this. Yeah. Like. We're going to try this out, and uh, you're going to be using it. So he did. That's funny. All right, what's your favorite baseball movie of all time? Uh, man, there's a ton of great ones, uh-huh. but um, for me, the one I always go back to and the one that I always watch every time it's on TV is For Love of the Game. Nice, okay. Um, I think for me, it's, you know, I was always a pitcher. You know, uh-huh. I, I, I pitched as long as I possibly could until I couldn't pitch anymore. So I got a soft spot for that. There you go. Um, you know, big Kevin Costner fan. I think there he does go. a good job. And I, I think for that game or for that movie, um, it blends like everything. You know, it's like a yeah. baseball movie. It's a love story. Like yeah. it's, you know, kind of funny at times with a yeah. lot of good characters in it. And I think the thing that like really, I guess I'd say drew me to it yeah. is they did a good job with all the actors. It's, very realistic like you know it's obviously set in the stadium you yeah know, like uh-huh. um the, the umpires are actually mlb umpires in the movie uh-huh. a lot of times you get like in sports movies yeah. you get the actors that have you know yeah, it's like, not realistic that guy's never played baseball. it's like, like i never played ball <laughs> that's not an umpire it's like you had the real umpires you actually had real baseball players uh-huh. that were playing on the field in those positions um and so that that made it very realistic to me like i felt like i was you know there at that game watching him throw that perfect game yeah. and you know, that story of him just, you know, you know, getting older and father time catching up to everybody and just the the allure of that and like how that intersects with baseball uh-huh. and the, the fact that someday we all got to give it up in, in a way like really, you know, resonates with me. And so I always appreciate that movie and always watch it every time. Nice. On. I, uh, I haven't watched that in a while. I feel like I need to go need yeah. to go get that one and uh, watch it again. Nice. Billy, Billy Chapel. <laughs> yeah. And I always remember, I think John C. Riley is the catcher. He is. Yeah, as well. He is, yeah. so I always, you think about yeah, it. Like like Step Brothers. Yeah. yeah, it's Step Brothers. And then he's a, he's a very, you know, catcher playing a very serious kind yeah. of, you know, supportive role to uh-huh. his pitcher. And it's just like the two of them, the battery mates. And it's like that whole dynamic is just really cool. For yeah, maybe. That is a good one. Okay. And then last one, better moment of the baseball season, opening day. Or the start of the World Series. Yeah, I got to go with the start of the World Series. Okay, nice. Um, I love the fall, the uh-huh. changing of the season, the you know the Christmas in the, in the air. Yeah. Um, you know when the World Series rolls around in October, it just it makes me think of being a kid and like watching the Braves and the Yankees, like you know mm-hmm. back in that time period yeah. where you'd see those kind of colder games, yeah. you know, that uh-huh. were in New York or Atlanta, wherever they were, yeah. and people got the long sleeves on. It's just the start of like the best of the best, you know, and like, you know, being really competitive, just like that, you know, battle of the two best teams at the end uh-huh. of the year, whoever's peaking at the right time. I just always appreciate, you know, seeing that and, you know, seeing the, uh, um, you know, best two teams battling out in October. And that's, sometimes you get some flurries and some go. weather and things like that. So that's funny. The World Series. That's funny. You say that. I like, I like my baseball a little colder as well. I, I like, I enjoy Something it. About yeah. it. Yeah. I like, <laughs> so. it, I like that, you know, changing of the seasons and the, and yeah, a little bit colder is, is always good for me. Nice. Well, this has been great, Caleb. I appreciate you coming on. 
I've actually learned a ton about this glove. Uh, um, you know, there's just those little things behind the creation of all the products yeah. that you, there's usually a story, like something was missing and that's why it's here. And sometimes we forget about that. That it's like, oh, most of these products are truly, they're here for a reason. So Yeah. And that, that's, you know, that's the story behind it. It wasn't anything like super crazy. It was just, you know, my personal experience and being around baseball and, um, you know, what my family helped kind of bring me into it with having two young kids and, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of seeing something and, um, you know, wanting to, wanting to help out ball players and um, like I said being fortunate enough to be at a place where we could bring something like that to life in a pretty short period of time honestly yeah. like I think that's that's really cool and um, yeah so great story you know that I'd, I've really been fortunate and uh, really honored to be a part of and uh, hopefully it'll it'll really help a lot of kids in their, nice. in their game so awesome well thanks for joining us yep. today thanks for having me on yeah everybody out there if you guys are loving this podcast and you want to help us out, just go ahead and tell your friends about, about the Beyond the Glove podcast. We have had a really great time putting this together so far. If you guys are watching on YouTube, definitely go ahead and give us a thumbs up. And if you're listening on Spotify or Apple, we'd appreciate that five-star review. Have a great day.